are on day number four and it is Sunday um, and we've got about 20 miles today so it is a longer day and we opted, I opted and the kids opted to go, well the kids aren't back there but they're in the other wagon, to be in the wagon today. We're gonna save our, our rears and have fun hopefully wagon. <laughs> she stopped with her husband 20 miles. 20. And if she's mad, she has to walk. <laughs> fun. It's, uh, I hope we can enjoy it. We don't get a lot of alone time having two children. So Grandpa stuck with the children today and we ended up at the back of the uh, line of wagons because we had to run back to camp real quick and so grandpa and the kids are about four wagons in front of us in the midst of the 30 wagons but now we're just chilling working hard see look how hard i'm working talking about the uh, you should tell them about the APR and what you said in your post well the American Prairie Reserve they're what we would call a special interest group they have uh, moved into Montana their goal is to have 3.5 million acres in their control but they're basically wanting to choke out the farmer and the ranchers out of central and uh, north central Montana to make it a big grass reserve and then turn bison loose and have free roaming bison but anyway this is just a reminder of uh, you know how hard the settlers work to come out into the American West and to settle this very country that they're wanting to turn around and I don't know I don't even know if it's wild and scenic per se because they still want to have infrastructure out here but uh, I was just thinking as I sit on this wagon that uh, my uh, be my great grandparents uh, homesteaded in south of Malta in 1908 so the wagon's probably actually about 110 or 20 years old and just how hard they worked to settle this land and all the infrastructure that they've put out here and stuff and I say just thinking about that it makes you and we have it pretty simple because we have a lot of comforts when we go to bed at night still being out in the middle of nowhere uh, but uh just you know how hard they worked they didn't even have the comforts we have in in camp they didn't have uh the ability to have uh, bottled water or clean water or propane to cook their food on or have pre-cooked food and so anyway I just think about all of that and how a uh, small handful of elite if you will a special interest group are trying to destroy what's taken 150 years to uh, establish but not only that it, it's a uh, um, part of it it's our heritage and our life and it's a way of life but also it's uh, threatening to the food source of uh, America you take 3.5 million acres and how much uh, farm ground and cattle production there is on it uh, I'm sorry people your food does not come from a grocery store mm -hmm. it comes from out here and uh, people like my wife and I and many are on this wagon train uh, we work hard every day of our lives to prov provide that food yes it's in our blood we love doing it it is a hard way to live to um, earn a living at times, but it's because we care for the people out there. We realize that if we're not out here producing food, it ain't gonna come from a lab and it ain't gonna just fall out of the sky or something, or um, I'm sorry, Walmart uh, sooner or later will run out of food if we don't produce it. So uh, anyway, that's my take on it, but it's just fun to be out here and kind of have a little bit of snippet of how it was, but we're still not even close. I got three more passes here. 
I always think about how when big groups um, have taken over, you know, big, big land, I guess, areas, and they don't know how to manage it. And so, like, a lot of the timber areas that are managed by the... Um, federal government Fed, or yeah that like the state ground and the or the federal ground and the places like the state parks and stuff a lot of times they're not managed properly and because they're not managed they're getting beetle kill and then there's huge forest fires that totally devastate an area and and i just think about how all of this land being mismanaged that affects everything as well and it just it, it it ruins the land when it's not taken care of properly and the people that live on this land know how to take care of it people that are rich that don't live here don't know how to take care of it and um i don't know i think that could be very detrimental too absolutely no i mean we we steward this i mean i managed a forty-eight thousand acre ranch for a couple of summers and i spent a lot of time on the uh the creek bottoms pushing cattle off of the creek bottom so it didn't destroy the riparian areas and the vegetation down there um you know we've put in water systems cross fences sometimes we joke as cowboys you know that um fences uh, ruin good saddle horses but the reality is is they're needed in a vast area like this to uh, help manage and bring greater production so you take 3.5 million acres and just turn a bunch of bison loose on it they're going to go on the bottoms they're going to go and hang out on the riparian areas nobody pushing them off of it um yeah, and who's gonna who's gonna push the buffalo off of the areas that they're totally ruining? No, and they have no plan for that. They think that it's just gonna be a natural way to do it and stuff, and uh, it's not gonna happen. But the reality is too, they're not gonna stay within the confines of the 3.5 million <laughs> acres. They will get outside those fences, and they will be on. Uh, private ground if you will and it's just a lot of things that are and they carry disease right brucellosis yeah absolutely they carry a disease that can threaten the cattle industry um montana has been and i think still are a brucellosis free state uh, but uh, we get one brucellosis uh, case in the state of montana and it's going to affect the ranching industry uh, drastically and, and you know can become very costly to the ra rancher out there and stuff and you know i mean i understand i mean i'm I absolutely into preserving the grasslands and I don't even want an extinction of, of any animals out there the bison wolves or otherwise but on the other hand by not managing this ground we will all of a sudden uh, start seeing a resurgence of uh, grizzly bears and uh, um, wolves a lot of the, the predators that we are and even our federal government over time spent a lot of money to control and uh, uh, reduce and stuff and so it's 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 a bigger fight than we probably most of us understand and it's not that you know and there again it's i'm not against the people of it i'm against the philosophy of it and uh fortunately we've had some uh, pretty good support for some pretty key individuals in our state legislature that uh realize you know i mean the downtown small town usa is threatened and you know where do the people go where do where do 1800 people out of malta montana go when that town dries up or where does there you know it's gonna it has a much bigger effect than just on on this central and uh, north central montana communities um you know it's a lot of things that if they did happen will set a precedence for the overall uh um you know uh for overall industry you know across the board you know if they can get some of their desires um in this area then other special interest groups throughout the united states can push for the same agenda and so it's uh but then again i could keep saying uh, the land war's been going on since we as the white man come to america and so it's just probably going to continue till the end of time but uh, nonetheless i guess we're going to keep fighting the fight and keep Trying to save the cowboy, so.
That's a good idea. But, Mommy, we'll take it out. I'll use That's a good idea. Mommy.